You uh, famously tweeted, it looks like if you bombard Earth with photons for a while, it can emit a roadster. So if like in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, we would summarize the story of Earth. So in, in, in that book, it's mostly harmless. Uh, what do you think is all the possible stories, like a paragraph long or a sentence long, that Earth could be summarized as? Once it's done, it's computation. Mm. So like all the possible full... If Earth is a book, right? Yeah. Uh, could, probably there has to be an ending. I mean, mm -hmm. there's going to be an end to Earth, and it could end in all kinds of ways. It can end soon, it can end later. Yeah. What do you think are the possible s stories? Well, definitely there seems to be... Yeah, you're sort of... It's pretty incredible that these self-replicating systems will basically arise from the dynamics, mm -hmm. and then they perpetuate themselves and become more complex and eventually become conscious and build... A society, and I kind of feel like, in some sense, it's kind of like a deterministic wave uh, that you know that kind of just like happens on any you know any sufficiently well arranged system like Earth. And so I kind of feel like there's a certain sense of inevitability in it, um, and it's really beautiful. And it ends somehow, right? So it's a it's a chemically a diverse environment where complex dynamical systems can. Uh, evolve yeah. and become more, more further and further complex. But then there's a certain, um, what is it? There's certain terminating conditions. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the terminating conditions are, but definitely there's a trend line of something, and we're part of that story. And like, where does that, where does it go? So you know, we're famously described often as a biological bootloader for AIs, mm -hmm. and that's because humans. I mean, you know, we're an incredible uh, biological system, and we're capable of computation and uh, you know, and love and so on. Um, but uh, we're extremely inefficient as well. Like we're talking to each other through audio. It's just kind of embarrassing, honestly, that we're manipulating like seven symbols uh, serially. <laughs> we're using vocal cords. It's all happening over like multiple seconds. Yeah. It's just like kind of embarrassing when you step down to the uh, frequencies at which com computers operate or are able to operate on. And so basically it does seem like um, synthetic intelligences are kind of like the next stage of development. And um, I don't know where it leads to. Like at some point, I suspect uh, the universe is some kind of a puzzle. And uh, these uh, synthetic AIs will uncover that puzzle and um, solve it. And then what happens after, right? Like what, because if you just like fast forward Earth many billions of years, it's like, uh, it's, it's quiet. And then it's like, Turmoil, you see like city lights and stuff like yeah. that. And then what happens at like at the end? Like, is it like a, is it, or is yeah. it like a calming? Is it explosion? Is it like earth, like open, like a giant? Cause you said uh, emit roasters. Like, yeah. will it start emitting like, a, like a giant number of yeah. like satellites? Yes, yeah, it's some kind of a fire. crazy explosion. And we're living, we're like, we're stepping through a explosion. <laughs> And we're like living day to day and it doesn't look like it, but it's actually, if you, I saw a very cool animation of earth uh, and life on earth and basically nothing happens for a long time. And then the last like two seconds, like basically cities and everything and just, <laughs> and the lower earth orbit just gets cluttered and just the whole thing happens in the last two seconds. And you're like, this is exploding. This is a state of explosion. <laughs> <laughs> so if you play, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you play at a normal speed, yeah, it's, it'll just look like an explosion. It's a firecracker. We're living in a firecracker. Where it's going to start emitting all kinds of interesting things. Yeah. And then, the, the, so explosion doesn't, it might actually look like a little explosion with, with lights and fire and energy emitted, all that kind of stuff. But when you look inside the details of the explosion, there's actual complexity happening yeah. where yes. there's like, uh, yeah, human life or some kind yeah. of life. We hope it's not a destructive firecracker. It's kind of like a constructive uh, <laughs> firecracker. All right, so given that <laughs> I think, uh, hilarious discussion. It is really interesting to think about like what the puzzle of the universe is. Did the creator of the universe uh, give us a message? Like for example, in the book Contact, um, Carl Sagan, uh, there's a message for humanity, for any civilization in uh, digits, in the expansion of pi in base 11 eventually, which is kind of an interesting thought. Uh, maybe, maybe we're supposed to be giving a message to our creator. Maybe we're supposed to somehow create some kind of a quantum mechanical system that alerts them to our intelligent presence here. Because if you think about it from their perspective, it's just say like quantum field theory, massive like cellular automaton-like thing. And like, how do you even notice that we exist? You might not even 
be able to pick us up in that simulation. And so, how do you uh, how do you prove that you exist, uh, that you're intelligent, and that you're part of the universe? So this is like a Turing test for intelligence from Earth. Yeah, like uh, the creator is. Uh, I mean, maybe this is uh, like trying to complete the next word in a sentence. This is a complicated way of that. Like yeah. Earth is just is basically sending a message back. Yeah, the puzzle is basically like alerting the creator that we exist. Yeah. Uh, or maybe the puzzle is just to uh, just break out of the system and just, uh, you know, uh, stick it to the creator in some way. Uh, basically, like if you're playing a video game, you can um, you can somehow find an exploit and find a way to execute on the host machine uh, any arbitrary code. Uh, there's some, uh, for example, I, I believe someone got a, Mario, a game of Mario to play Pong just by um, exploiting it and then um, creating a basically writing, writing code and, and being able to execute arbitrary code in the game. And so maybe we should be, maybe that's the puzzle, is that we should be um, uh, find a way to exploit it. So so I think like some of these synthetic AIs will eventually find the universe to be some kind of a puzzle and then solve it in some way. And that's kind of like the end game somehow. Do you often think about it as a, as a simulation? So uh, as or the universe being a kind of computation that has might have bugs and exploits? Yes, yeah, I think so. I is think, that what uh, physics is, is essentially? I think it's possible that physics has exploits and we should be trying to find them. Uh, arranging some kind of a crazy quantum mechanical system that somehow gives you buffer overflow, uh, somehow gives you a rounding error in the floating point. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. And like more and more sophisticated uh, exploits. Like th Those Maybe. are jokes, but that could be actually we'll very close yeah, to Yeah, we'll find some way to extract infinite energy. Uh, for example, when you train uh, reinforcement learning agents um, in physical simulations, and you ask them to say run quickly on the flat ground, they'll end up doing all kinds of like weird things um, in part of that optimization. Right? They'll get on their back leg and they'll slide across the mm -hmm. floor, and it's because uh, the optimization, um, the reinforcement learning optimization on that agent, has figured out a way to extract infinite energy from the friction forces and um, basically their poor implementation. And uh, they found a way to generate infinite energy and just slide across the surface. And it's not what you expected. It's just a, it's sort of like a perverse solution. And so maybe we can find something like that. Maybe we can be that little dog in this <laughs> physical simulation. <laughs> the, the, the cracks or escapes the intended consequences of the physics that the universe came up with. Yeah. We'll figure out some kind of shortcut to some weirdness. Yeah. And then, oh man, but see the problem with that weirdness is the first person to discover the weirdness like sliding in the back legs, that's all we're gonna do. Mm. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's it very quickly become everybody does that thing. <laughs> so like yeah. the, the, the paperclip maximizer is a ridiculous idea, but that very well yeah. could be what then we'll just, uh, we'll just all switch that because it's so fun. Well, no person will discover it, I think, by the way. I think it's going to have to be uh, some kind of a super intelligent AGI of a third generation. Like we're building the first generation AGI, maybe then, you know, <laughs> third generation. Yeah. So the the bootloader for an AI, the that AI, yeah, will be a bootloader for another AI. Better AI, yeah. And then there's no way for us to introspect like what that no, might yeah. even. Um... I think it's very likely that these things, for example, like say you have these AGIs, it's very likely, that, for example, they will be completely inert. I like these kinds of sci-fi books sometimes where uh, these things are just completely inert; they don't interact with anything. And I find that kind of beautiful because uh, they probably uh, they've probably figured out the meta meta game of the universe in some way potentially. They're they're doing something completely beyond our imagination, um, and uh, they don't interact with simple chemical life forms. Like <laughs> why would you do that? So I find those kinds of ideas compelling. What's their source of fun? What are they What are they doing? What's well, the source of pleasure? Puzzle solving in the universe. But inert. So can you define what it means inert? So they escape. The they will appear inert reality. to us, as in um, uh, they will behave in some very like strange way to us uh, because they're uh, they're beyond they're playing the meta game, uh, and the meta game is probably say like arranging quantum mechanical systems in some very weird ways to extract infinite energy, uh, solve the digital expansion of pi to whatever amount. Uh, they will build their own like little fusion reactors or something crazy. Like they're doing something beyond comprehension and uh, not understandable to us and uh, actually brilliant under the hood. What if quantum mechanics itself is the system and we're just thinking it's physics 
but we're really parasites on, on or not parasites, we're not really hurting physics. <laughs> we're just living on this organism, mm. th this organism, mm. and we're like trying to understand it, but really it is an organism mm. and with a deep, deep intelligence. Maybe physics itself is mm. uh, the, the, the organism that's doing the super interesting thing. And we're just like one little thing, yeah, uh, ant sitting on top of it, trying yeah. to get energy from it. We're just kind of like these particles in a wave that I feel like is mostly deterministic and takes a uh, universe from some kind of a big bang to some kind of a super intelligent replicator, some kind of a stable point in the universe, given these laws of physics. You don't think, uh, as Einstein said, God doesn't play dice? So you, you think it's mostly deterministic? There's no randomness in the thing? I think it's deterministic. Oh, there's tons of... Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I want to be careful with randomness. Pseudo-random? Yeah, I don't like random. Uh, I think maybe the laws of physics are deterministic. Um, yeah, I think they're deterministic. You just got really uncomfortable with this question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this, do you have anxiety about whether the universe is random or not? Is this a sort of... <laughs> What's like, there's no it's, randomness. No, it's it's uh, you said you like goodwill hunting. It's not your fault, Andre. It's not, <laughs> it's not your fault, man. Um, so you, you don't like randomness? Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, unsettling. I think it's a deterministic system. I think that things that look random, like say the uh, collapse of the wave function, etc., I think they're actually deterministic, just entanglement uh, and so on, and uh, some kind of a multiverse theory, something, something. Okay, so why does it feel like we have a free will? Like if I, if I raised his hand, I chose to do this now. Mm -hmm. um, what, that doesn't feel like a deterministic thing. It feels like I'm making a choice. It feels like it. Okay, so it's all feelings. It's just feelings. Yeah. So when an RL agent is making a choice, is that, um, it's not really making a choice. The choice is all already there. Yeah, you're interpreting the choice and you're creating a narrative for, for having made it. Yeah, and now we're talking about the narrative, it's very meta. <laughs>